these things here, the Performing Fine Arts uh, Assessment Project, that's the first acronym, and then the NGSs, we just call them lovingly the NGSs, which is the Next Generation Sunshine State Standards, and then Core Curriculum Standards. So here we go. We're going to look at that, all of those things there, and how they work together. It really is a cycle and a circle and keeps going around and building upon each other and uh, making changes as we go through these. They work hand in hand. They are not separate from each other. They all work together. So here's the end in mind. This is what we spend a, a great deal of our time on, which is the Florida Fine Arts Performing Arts uh, Project. It is a major initiative of the Florida's Race to the Top grant. That was one of the things that was written right into the grant. We're the only state in the union that we know of that actually wrote that into their federal proposal. Now, there are other states that are using Race to the Top money to do uh, performing fine arts grants and those kinds of things, but ours was actually a, a, a big part of the grant that Florida wrote. We are part of seven projects called Hard to Measure. It makes us laugh every single time because that's like, yep, duh. It really is. We're hard to measure. But the other part is it is for us is that this is being developed by the people who work closest to the students. We have over 120 uh, dance, theater, and music teachers that are working on this project, as well as many people from our, our state universities. We have Dr. John Seibert from Southeastern University. We have Dr. Steve Kelly from Florida State University. We have Dr. David Williams from uh, the uh, University of South Florida. We're an equal opportunity offender. You know, mm -hmm. as we do this, we grab everybody and have everybody in there. Mary Grace and I will be leaving shortly after this presentation because we have 100 writers and reviewers in Polk County, even as we speak, that are working together on the project. So I texted them a little bit ago and said, is everybody okay? So uh, I haven't heard that, <coughs> so I guess that they are. So what is the purpose of this? This is a tool for assessing the performing fine arts that is to be available to all districts and all teachers in the state, okay? And what is it exactly? It's going to be a test bank of high quality items. It's the, it's that you can take out uh, test items and make your own uh, assessment if you so choose. There's different levels of um, access that you'll have. Districts will have a larger access than an individual teacher, et cetera. Gary. So uh, going back there, uh, would you repeat that for a second? Because uh, right now we face EOCs. Yes. So. This is the beginning of the EOCs. Because it will actually be a test bank of high quality items, items that are, are based exactly on the, ne the Next Generation Sunshine State Standards. They're all written for those standards. Well, the end of course testing is by statute supposed to be in place by the school year 2014-15. And this is an initiative to work towards that. Part of our project is also to create a formative and summative um, blueprint that will give districts an idea of how that they can take this test bank and use it in the assessment process. Now at the very beginning of this, and this is where I want to make sure you understand, I work for Polk County Schools, okay, I'm going to say that again. Mm -hmm. At the very beginning of this, it was um, not, not directly discussed that these would, items would be used for end of course assessments. But as we've gone further and further into the teacher evaluation system, Gary, I think we all know that that is what they're going to be used for. Now, the biggest thing that we want to make sure that everybody understands is that we're looking at this from an artistic process. The artistic process is performing, responding, and creating art, okay? It's not just the sit in the classroom and take a paper and pencil kind of exam. It, it, that, maybe part of it, but that is not everything that is in there. Because what you will find out, what we have found out, if I can get it to go, we have done several surveys for, with teachers around the state and with teachers who are working on our proje project. And this is what we do mostly in the classroom. The biggest part is performing. We do have the part where we're doing the responding, where they're, they're, they're responding to some other type of stimuli into the classroom and then a creating. We'd like that creating piece to get a little bigger, right? But the reality is, we, it's not that big yet. 
because we're still teaching kids how to deal with art, with, with their particular type of art. This not only held true with what we do in Florida, but this helps, holds true with, through the NAEP project, which was the National um, Assessment Project in Arts. That was that is, is about 10 years old at this point in time. But they have worked on the same type of basis that is the uh, artistic process. So you'll hear me talk about performing, creating, responding quite a bit. We do have a website if you would like to, have to see some of the things that we have developed within this project. It is housed at the Center for Fine Arts Education, which is a subsidiary of the Florida Music Educators Association. They host our website, so it's cfaefl.org. You can just go and Google Florida Performing Fine Arts Assessment, and it's going to, that'll be the first thing that you hit. There is a tab up at the top that you'll see that says a Florida Performing Fine Arts Assessment Project. These are just some of the things that we have developed. We have a guide, this is a style guide for writing and reviewing. Um, I'm not an assessment expert. I'm a curriculum expert. I'm a music teacher, right? So we had to learn and we have, have partners with us through the American uh, Institutes for Research out of Washington, D.C., who are assessment uh, professionals and they are assisting us to make sure that we don't do anything that is outside of the protocols, the accepted protocols for assessment. We have that guide and then we have, make sure I'm clicking in the right place there, this is the biggest thing that we have been working on lately, this is the item specifications. We have uh, put a full layer revision of these. Our item specifications have been revised by benchmark by course. And why is that important? Because if you look at the, net, the NGSs, you, you might see one benchmark that appears in 17, maybe 24 courses. So at first we only wrote item specifications just by the benchmark. But you know if you have the same benchmark that is in band, orchestra, chorus, jazz band, general music, the list goes on. It looks a little different within those different courses. So our item specifications are very specific and I'm going to spend some time on that today. Of course we have security agreements. All of our items that we are doing, you know, I mean there's a whole thing. We'll, you'll be thrown in jail if you share this, this stuff outside. Um, not the stuff I'm sharing you right now. This is for our writers and reviewers. But we also have a, developed a very nice virtual writing and reviewer training for our people as well. So, what is an item specification? I'll give you just a second to read through this. This does come from our grant people at uh, the Department of Education. The biggest thing I want you to know is that this is a resource for our writers and reviewers, for them to understand better what the, 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 the NGS is are saying and specific guidelines on how to write these items. So again, it's a guide and here are some of the questions that we use to help us uh, when we're developing the item specifications. What are the things that we want to make sure we are able to convey? What is it that this benchmark really means for this grade level and for this course? What questions should be asked to determine whether the student has mastered this benchmark? Remember, the assessment is going to be based completely on the NGSs, on the benchmarks. And if we look at a body of work by a student, what will we see that indicates the student has mastered this benchmark? You're going to see in just a second two different types of item specifications. One for responding items, which would be used on more of a pencil paper type thing or an electronic format. And the other one is a performing item. There are three parts to a performing uh, part of the assessment. It would be an on-demand performance, such as sight reading or improvisation, or it would be a prepared performance. So I have prepared my solo and I'm going to go sing it. Or the third one, a creative, something creative where they are improv improvising, excuse me, or they're writing something new, um, or creating something right there on the spot. So we have those aspects in there. And that's what we're talking about by the body of work for a student. 
because you're going to see in just a second that that takes a lot of different benchmarks that you put together to create one task. This is a sample draft of a responding item specification. This is an actual item spec. And if you're wondering, well, where can I get a hold of these? Well, they are going to be available to the public probably by the end of this month. They haven't been uh, fully reviewed by the Department of Education and approved, but as soon as they are, they will go onto our website and, as I understand it, onto their website as well. But let's take a look at a couple of things here. The non-negotiable are the benchmark numbers, the big ideas, the enduring understanding, and the actual benchmark. That comes out of the, the Next Generation Sunshine State Standards. So where we start is where you come to the benchmark clarification. So benchmark clarification is not just the restating of the benchmark, but it is trying to help us focus and narrow what we are going to be asking on the assessment. We have the item type. It would either be, in this particular case, an extended response or short answer. So this would not be a multiple choice question. Content limits. Um, this is a theater item. And what this is saying is that the writer could choose examples from amateur to professional. Sometimes the content limits are much more detailed, helping to narrow down the focus again. The depth of knowledge has been adopted by the Department of Education rather than Bloom's Taxonomy, and this aligns with Level 3, which is strategic thinking. The stimulus attributes, that's what's going to go into the actual question, if there's anything unusual or specific in that. The response attributes is what goes into the answers, if there's anything specific. So here's a draft sample question that would go with that benchmark. So what, watch this video, and was this example successful or unsuccessful? Justify your answer with this, et cetera. You can read it there. This would be a short answer example. This is, is not showing you the actual media, but it is describing the media. One of the things that I think is very important for us to all remember, these assessments are not to, meant to be a drop the needle type thing, or a name that tune, or a name that composer, right? We all went through that when we were in college, or uh, th those types of things. But the media, any type of media that we're asking the kids to be able to make critical decisions of, and those types of things, higher order thinking, that it must contain enough information so if the student doesn't know the work, they would be able to answer the question. This is a draft of a performing on a specification. If you'll look up where it says benchmarks, there's several of them in there, which would narrow down to one task. This task is actually a prepared skill, and it is made for band three. And it's, what it is asking them to do it is a skill, and when you look down to the, um, to the content limits, what they are going to be asked to do is an etude, or perform an etude or an exercise similar to the music that's on the Florida Bandmasters Association for this level student, okay? So lots of details there, how long it's gonna take, what kind of uh, equipment that you need, what's the range, what's the, all kinds of details there, okay? Now to restate, our goal is to create a test bank of items that's available to all teachers and districts. The items are built <coughs> on the Next Generation Sunshine State Standards by course, by benchmark, and the item specifications guide the writers to review as we create these uh, high quality items. So I'm gonna run through a really quick example of taking this assessment and now back, backing it up into the classroom. So if I take this particular benchmark, what is something that I wanna think of as I know what's going to be on this assessment, how could I assess this? So we're just gonna do a really quick little example here, right? So you see what the benchmark is is how is Western music been influenced um, by historical and current world cultures? Tell me what you see in this. What do you see? What can you observe from this? What kind of things can you tell me about what's going on here? What's the time period? 40s, 50s. 40s. Okay, 40s, 50s. Where are you? Busy city somewhere. Busy city somewhere, nightclub. Who's on the marquee there? Uh -huh. Charlie, Charlie Parker. Anybody recognize that name? Jazz. Jazz. Okay. 
Has anybody ever seen this picture? Yes. Yes. Where did it take place, Harlem. Gary? It is in Harlem. What do you see in it that is um, that stands out to you? Do you see anything? It's a wedding. Okay, maybe a wedding. What about yeah, color? A couple, yeah, a couple of white faces. We do have a couple of white faces, right? Mm -hmm. What about uh, age? For a variety. There is a variety. You've got children down at the bottom and you've got children up top, right? Anybody? Oh, where'd it go? Maybe. Where'd it go? Oh, there we go. Anybody know this guy that's sitting down with the kids? Can't see him from this range. <laughs> it's Count Basie. Uh, and he's like, I'm tired. I'm going to sit with the kids. So what is this thing about? Well, it was called A Great Day in Harlem. It's 1958. There was an advertisement that went out and said at 10 o'clock, we're going to meet here and we're going to take a picture. Who's in this? These are some of the best musicians, jazz musicians, ever to, to grace our earth here. The oldest was 71 and the youngest was 27 of the musicians. Of course, the children were younger, right? And this is the, at this time, only four musicians out of that picture are left alive. But wouldn't this be a great start to a jazz, you know, a jazz listening example? You know, you play a Charlie Parker tune, you play something from Count Basie. It'd be a great example of a way to start to start that, to get to the end of that okay. assessment. We're going to take a little second here and we're going to look at common core standards <coughs> because these are, they are not going away. They are part of what we are going to be doing and continue to do. So the core standards address what students should know in mathematics um, and English language arts by the end of the grade level, okay? And these are, uh, were not, they're not national standards, but they have been adopted, as you see, by 45 states and three territories. They do not replace the NGSs at all. They are in addition to the NGSs. They are, uh, the Common Core Standards are embedded into the course descriptions of the Performing Fine Arts. And I need to tell you this as well. They are currently doing additional um, revisions of those and to see if there's going to be additional common course standards that will be placed into <coughs> our uh, course descriptions. That is supposed to be finished by April, okay? Now, we are, it, yes, Mr. Sanders? Uh, when, when you say they, you mean mm -hmm. Department of Education? Department of Education, I apologize, okay. correct. I, I guess this is a place where I'm getting a little fuzzy. So I was under the impression that the common course standards at the national level haven't created fine arts and performing arts. Correct. Standards, right? That is correct. These common core standards are for only math and English language arts. Right. So these, there are common core standards that they are embedding into the fine arts courses. These are not art standards at all. It is my understanding that there will not be common core fine arts standards at the national level. Right. Although they are looking at so having national standards. Right. Well, and the, the issue with Common Core here is that they're looking at the, the other academic uh, courses, right? It's just your English and your mathematics at this point. Don? But when you read the Common Core, a lot of them do apply very easily to they our do. courses. They do. They do. I'm so glad you said that. We're going to look at one. That's exactly right. Because they're really written as, like, it's the idea of teaching kids how to think. Yes. So they're more generalized, so they can fit into a lot of different... Yeah, and you've got it, so thank you for that. You have it. it, it they are based on higher level thinking, critical thinking, all of those things, and Debbie saying... Yeah, <laughs> the Common Core Standards, um, as Donald said, there are some natural fits in there. And uh, we're going to take a look at it a little bit and see how this works. Where can you find the common core standards that are embedded into the fine arts courses, okay? Well, this is thank you for asking. And I will tell you that, that when you start at this website, this is called cpoms.org, and you can go up to the top here. I'm not sure if this is going to there it is. If you go right here where it says course descriptions, it brings down another drop-down menu. And you will do several drop-down menus. This one, I, I chose to go to, to dance on this one, okay? Um, uh, and it is part of theater arts, etc. So when you get you know, on into it, you can pull up a particular course, and then there's another tab that asks you to pull up the standards. Okay. So this is the course description. 
These have been adopted uh, by the State School Board Association. I will tell you a little caveat here. You have to be a little careful because there are some old course descriptions that still show up, right, my friend? Yes. Yeah. So you have to be a little careful. So you need to, to uh, that's just my caveat, caveat, all right? Just be careful on that. But then when you click on the standards, then you come up with the NGSs and then some of the common core standards. So if you were to uh, look in here, they're all kind of embedded. This is a, a dance core, or a theater course, I apologize. And this has a music standard in it, has several theater standards in it, and then you also have LACC. When you see the CC, that's a common core benchmark, or a common core standard, I apologize. They are not benchmarks. They are standards. There is a difference. They are standards. Ours are benchmarks, okay, for the performing fine arts. Ours is a benchmark, and the Common Core is a standard. So this one um, happens to say, I'll walk up here so I can read it to you, uh, produce clear and coherent writing in which the development and the style are appropriate to the task. Well, yes, we're going to have our kids write in our class. <laughs> um, that, that's a common one, as Donald was saying, that goes natu excuse me, naturally into our uh, courses. There, a lot of care is being taken to make sure that it is not something that is out of the range of what we do anyway in our course. Because they are embedded in what we are doing, how does this look in a uh, fine arts classroom? This is at, this says, analyze how an author's choice could uh, concerning how to structure a text or order events within it and manipulate time and create effects such as mystery, tension, and surprise. In Polk County, we do a, a comprehensive instructional sequence model. And within it, these are these four main things that they're looking at for students to be able to read and to be able to interpret complex text. Well, we have trained all of our fine arts teachers in this. And what I want to show you is that the idea of, of what you want a kid to look like in a piece of complex text that you're using in the English language arts or you're using in a science classroom, that process can be used uh, within what you're doing in a music classroom as well or in any fine arts classroom. So I'm going to switch now and go to music for a second. This is a, a piece of music based on a poem. And I'm going to show you quickly how you can address the same kind of context things. <clears throat> First of all, vocabulary. So you're looking at some of the words that are in there that the students might need to, that may have multiple meanings, might have a different meaning within their culture than what is being uh, done in this or used in this. But it's not just that. It's the vocabulary of the language of the art as well. So the dots across it that there's no breath or the crescendo marking, what does that mean? So it's looking at vocabulary from all sides. Also text coding. It's not just highlighting, but it's text coding. Reading something and being able to categorize that or put it into some kind of sorting mechanism so the students can start saying, oh, this is about this, or this is about this. It mainly talks about this. So it's a sorting mechanism that they can use. And you actually start with like a, a if you're going to talk, is, does this have a positive influence? You put a peep. And you mark it in the text. Another thing would be directed note taking. Well, in what we do in the performing fine arts, it might be marking your score as your conductor is telling you, or marking something that's a problem spot, or you're seeing something, oh, I saw this here. And so you're looking at things that you can categorize so that you can remember it later. Isn't that what we're trying to do with complex text? We want the kids to be able to categorize things so that they can remember it. Demonstrating the, the understanding of the text via a performance. Now they're going to take what they have learned here and take all of the ideas of the <coughs> vocabulary and the meaning of the text and do they perform it and make it meaningful. Here's a brief look of what we covered today. We looked a little bit at the Performing Fine Arts Assessment Project. We looked at the Next Generation Sunshine State Standards as they are the foundation for the assessment project and how co common core standards fit into the fine arts. We should not be afraid of them. They fit us. 
And when you look at our next generation standards, you'll see that so many of those are looking at those critical thinking and those higher order thinking. They all work together. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.